Hey friends, in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about a fabric warehouse, how it's different than the fabric lake house, how to create one very easily, and also how to go through and use different DDL operations in your warehouse to create tables from your lake house. Let's get to it. Hello, my name is Austin Leibel and I am a trainer at Pragmatic Works on what we call our data engineering team. And I'm going to talk to you today about Microsoft Fabric. Now, if you've heard anything about Fabric so far, you might be familiar with it is essentially a way to go through and have an end-to-end -end analytics product in the Power BI service, taking different technologies from things like Azure Synapse Analytics, Azure Data Factory, Databricks Notebooks, and combining them all into the nice Power BI user interface that we all know and love. Now, if you haven't watched any of our content on the Pragmatic Works channel around Fabric, definitely check out my one and a half hour Learn With The Nerd session where we do an end-to-end -end analytics scenario using Microsoft Fabric. I'm going to be using that same workspace here to be able to understand exactly how the warehouse works. We used a lake house in that video series where we went through and talked about how we can uh, create lake houses and how we can manage them and how we can get data into them. And we saw that we have many different ways to be able Able to do that but with the warehouse opportunity we're going to have maybe a little bit fewer options on how to work with different types of data that's going to be one of the main differences between a lake house and a warehouse in fabric a lake house can handle structured unstructured and semi-structured data where a warehouse is really only going to handle the structured type now a lake house is going to allow for read only operations in sql when you want to go through and query the sql endpoint as we do in that learn with the nerd session but a warehouse is going to allow you to go through and do read as well as write operations as well and that's what i want to show you how to do today so let's go through a quick demonstration on creating a warehouse and then also taking data from our lake house and writing it in the warehouse giving you a more typical ssms sql server look and feel if that's where your background is from let's get to it inside of my learn with the nerds power bi workspace that has fabric enabled you can see i have many different objects one of them is the adventure works lake house if i go and click inside of the adventure works lake house you're going to see that i have several different tables there now technically all of the tables on my lake house are actually just files that are backed up through the one lake floor so we have this one lake data lake to allow for uh, data integration from all different sources and really one storage layer to have all of our data stored there and we can actually go through and view some of those different files inside of this so if we go over here to this dim currency table on my adventureworks lake house I can click on my view files and see that I have a delta log. These are delta tables from Parquet files that have this version history applied to that. And then I also have some Parquet files that are composed of this table, giving me my data when I go back over here that we're looking at now. Now, taking this right here, we're actually able to go through and create a warehouse out of that. Now, I'm going to go back over to my Learn with the Nerds workspace, and I'm going to create a new warehouse. Now, if you simply click the drop down here on Learn with the Nerds, you may not see the warehouse option here. So you might have to go over and look at your different personas that allow you to go and switch between different identities, essentially, within a Fabric-enabled workspace. So I have here the Data Engineering workspace, the Data Science workspace. Now, ultimately, all of these are all tied to the same Learn with the Nerds workspace, as you can see right here but they just give me different options to work inside of one of them as you can see of course is the data warehouse so i'm going to go ahead and click on that and when i click on this this gives me a myriad of options to be able to go through create a warehouse ingest data into a warehouse either using a data pipeline or some sort of data flow gen 2 but we are going to be a little more limited on how we can actually get data into that warehouse now what i'm going to do is go ahead and create a new warehouse for myself simply by clicking on this I want to create another adventure works warehouse so i'm going to call this just aw and i'm going to call it dw for of course data warehouse and then just create this new object inside of my fabric workspace so this is now going to allow me to go through and create different sql operations that i wouldn't typically be able to do with the lake house which really only allows for data ingestion with things like a data flow uh, maybe like some sort of spark notebook or maybe also some sort of data pipeline from like a data factory pipeline 
All right, and you can see here are my options available for getting started with data. We're gonna create tables with T-SQL, but before we do that, I'm gonna go over here to my Explorer, which of course is very similar to our Object Explorer in SQL Server Management Studio, and click on a new warehouse, a new option here. So what I would want to do with this is bring over the ability to work with the AdventureWorks Lake House. I know I don't have this specification here, but this is my AdventureWorks Lake House where we're gonna find that dim currency table that I was just looking at a few moments ago. So if I click this and say, yes, I want to be able to go through and look at that, that is again, all stored on the one lake. It's all just one lake uh, where we have a data lake, a place to store all of our files, structured files, semi-structured, all of those. But I can make that connection here and it's very, very easy to do. You see, now I have the ability to go in and look at that dim currency table from my lake house. What the really awesome thing with I can do with this is though, I want to go through and I want to create a new table in my AWDW here, my AdventureWorks Data Warehouse. So I want to go through here and I want to create uh, some sort of table structure here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new SQL query. This is going to give me again SQL operations so I can go through and potentially select from a table in my warehouse, but I don't have one yet, or I can select into a table from my lake house. Again, kind of the, um, the connection between the data because again, it's all backed up on this one lake that we can go through and make connections very easily. So what I'm gonna do is a simple statement. I'm gonna say I want to select star and I'm going to select star into a new table on my warehouse. So I'm gonna say for AWDW, dot dbo just database owner the default schema i want to create a new dim currency table now i'm just saying new just to kind of show that this does work it's not the same one I'm not replicating this or anything like that so i'm going to select star into this table from my adventure works lake house dbo dot dim currency table so this is all i'm going to do i'm just going to go through execute this very simple select star into statement from my table that already exists Go ahead and run this now. It shouldn't take too long. There's not too much data here. It's all just sample data. And we should ultimately see that a new table was very easily created inside of our warehouse. And it's already run just like that. So I'm gonna go through here and do a refresh on this warehouse just to be able to load all of my new data that's been uh, loaded from my lake house into this. And then I'm gonna go through ultimately once this loads and show you where I have now a schema that has been created. Under that DBO schema here, I have my tables. And if I open up my tables, hey, right there's my new DIM currency that I can right click on, select star from, I can go through and work in that very easily. So as you can see, this gives us a really easy way to go through and use some of the technologies and some of the tools you already are very familiar with and know well. SQL Server, working with T-SQL, being able to create tables and data definition language, all those operations there are still available for you in Fabric, just not in the lake house, but in the warehouse. So whether you're coming from an on-premises SQL Server background or you come from some background where you work with lake houses already, you're still going to be able to collaborate together in this same workspace and I think that is awesome. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you're looking for more Fabric content, definitely check out our YouTube channel. Make sure you like and subscribe this video to keep getting great content uh, around Fabric and many other different offerings that we have here at Pragmatic Works, like still Azure Synapse Analytics, Data Factory, Power Apps, Power Platform products, uh, Power Be High, of course. We have so much here on the channel. So definitely stay tuned for more great content coming in the future. Or if you wanna scale up your knowledge a little bit quicker, definitely check out our on-demand learning platform where we have classes that go in depth to all these different technologies that you can take at your own pace also. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you are still excited for Fabric as we start working through different uh, opportunities and seeing it kind of move towards a GA, hopefully here uh, within the next uh, six months or so. We'll see, of course, we don't know yet, but uh, it's getting better and better and they are improving it every single day. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next one.